So uh, good morning to all of you, and I'm just going to give a very quick introduction to uh, two programs you know about, and uh, then you'll hear from students. And there are two programs uh, that you've heard of, the Pool Grants and the Page Grants, and they are named after two remarkable Tafties, and I want you to know just a little bit about them, and then I hope that uh, you'll be interested in possibly applying for one of these. So uh, Bob Poole was a Taft graduate in uh, 1950, and when he uh, finished graduating uh, from Yale, he came back and taught at Taft. Uh, from 1952 to 1962, and he was a great football coach and a, a great teacher, really beloved on the campus, and his passion had always been uh, wildlife conservation and ecology, and so after he left Taft, he went into the original Peace Corps, which had been started in the early 1960s by President Kennedy, and he went to Africa, and there this great love of Africa and Africa and, uh, African wildlife and conservation was born in him. And he became not just a, a leading uh, conservationist, but one of the great leaders in the world in conservation. He was the director of the African Wildlife uh, Leadership Foundation. And in ways that, that make me very proud, he, he just embodied the school's motto of service so incredibly well. And he became one of the strongest voices and most influential in, in looking at African wildlife. And then tragically, he was killed in a car accident. And afterwards, a number of friends stepped forward, Taft friends, to uh, create a scholarship or a program in his honor. And what it has allowed students over the years to do is to go do summer work in uh, conservation and community service. And so you'll hear, you'll hear some about the, the uh, pool grants. And the second is one named after a woman named Meg Page who graduated in 1974. And she was a great friend of Mr. Frew's. She was a, a brilliant, uh, really spirited young woman. She went on to a great business career when she graduated. And then tragically, she was diagnosed with cancer. And then typical of her, she was a real fighter um, and an amazing woman. Even as she was ill, she uh, got involved in medical research. She served on boards. She raised money. She volunteered. And then with the full support of some very close Taft friends, she decided that they would st set up a, a, program, a fund after her death, which would be used for Taft students who wanted to do work and volunteer in medical research, interning, helping at a hospital, and so on. And so to the end of her life, she was thinking about others in a way that I think is really inspiring. And so students who have done this, they've attended conferences. I've known students who did uh, medical research with doctors and so on. So these two programs are open to, to all of you, and I'll just make a couple quick points. Uh, Mrs. Frew chairs a, a faculty committee that looks at the applications. A few, a few things you might think about. Um, if you're interested, I think it's a great skill. That is the skill of actually applying to a foundation, making the case, making an argument for your, uh, your situation is a really, really good skill and one that you develop here. Um, second, just to be clear, these are not travel grants. So you would not apply simply because you want to travel somewhere. These are grants that are given for conservation, community, and medical service and research. Uh, the third is, just to be clear, I think the committee really looks for maximum impact that is in ways in which your hours and the dollars have a, a, a strong impact. And the uh, last point I'd make is that we are very generously funded, but there are years, in fact, when the, the requests outnumber the amount of money we have. And so it may be that you don't get fully funded, but you're still funded and you get the honor of being uh, one of these two, receiving one of these two grants. So I hope that they're, they're of interest to view. If you have any uh, questions, you can ask me or Mrs. Frew, and certainly any one of the students you can hear from today. And I'm really uh, proud of them for what they've done, and, and I'm grateful that they're going to speak to you. And I think we start off with Alex. So, Alex? Good morning. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Perfect. So my name is Alex, and I'm a third year junior here. Um, this summer, I had the opportunity to participate in the Cardiothoracic Surgical Skills Summer Internship Program at Stanford University. There's a lot of S's in that, a lot of words. Sometimes I fail to pronounce it. But that's all of us who participated in that program, and I'll tell you a little bit about what I did there. So the program is two weeks long, and we stayed in an alleged vegan nudist house. Uh, the front door had all these leaves and vines on it. It was actually really pretty. But the photo on the left here is all of our TAs, um, our teaching assistants, who lived in the dorm with us and taught us in our labs uh, that we had every day throughout the two weeks. On the right is the creator of the program, uh, Paul Chang. He is not an MD, actually, just a researcher, but he still performs real live surgeries. Um, why? He's not an MD. Why would that happen? He perfected the heart and lung transplant technique, so he's actually quite a legend, and Sanford says, 
absolutely, you can uh, perform these surgeries. So sometimes he would have to take off because he had a surgery that was bumped earlier or bumped later, or things like that. But he was great. So we started off by clearing fascia on the hearts just to simply get used to the tools, those kinds of things. And Claire on the right, um, a third year medical student, would teach us in the afternoons um, about different bodily functions. And by the end of the program, we had learned all human systems um, at a very basic level. But then we moved to coronary artery bypass graft. So for me, it's actually really funny because I put a cabbage on there. But that's what it is. So it's called a cabbage. Um, stands for coronary artery bypass graft. So we basically take a graft and um, bypass the blockage in the heart. And that's what a heart attack is. So you can see on the left, we're just starting to suture it onto the heart. And on the right, it's almost there. We just have to put in the last few stitches. And that all led up to our aortic valve replacement. So here we actually scrubbed into this surgery like real surgeons, um, just like Grey's Anatomy put on surgical gloves, gown, everything. I was the head surgeon in this with my friend Caden. He was from Vancouver. Um, I had the headlight on. And on the right there, you can see um, this was one of our practice runs, the valve that we were actually about to parachute down uh, where it's supposed to be. It's actually very satisfying once you put in all the sutures and you slide it down. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and then they also had guest doctors come in to help us. So right here we have uh, one of my friends looking at my kidney. Nothing wrong with my kidney. She ended up having a kidney stone that they discovered, which was interesting. <laughs> the middle one, my heart, uh, that's my heart. You can see the different chambers. I'm not exactly sure what the orientation is, I forget. But uh, I was the test subject for that, which was a lot of fun. The doctor uh, was doing that echo. And on the right was a fourth year cardiac trauma resident who came and talked to us about the things that she's seen in um, the trauma bay. Um, and there she's talking about cardiac tamponade. So other than that, we did a lot of other fun things. Like we went to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. I look really weird, partially because I don't really know how to smile, but also because it was really bright. Uh, volleyball at day and at night. We crabbed. I've never done that before. So I took a selfie with a crab. And we cooked crab. So we did a lot of fun things in and outside of Stanford. Uh, we went to the Stanford Mall as well, which was a lot of fun. Um, or just roamed around the campus and people watched. So I want to say thank you to everyone involved with the Meg Page Grant for helping me chase my dreams. This program was a game changer for me and my quest to become a surgeon. So thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Sean Dunbar, and I'm a three-year junior. This summer, I was lucky enough to receive a pool grant to attend the Island School Summer Tour. The Island School is located on the island of Eleuthera in the Bahamas and offers semester and summer, term, summer terms with a focus on marine science, sustainability, and the development of the Bahamas. It is also home to the Cape Eleuthera Institute and the Center for Sustainable Development, which are both research centers that work closely with the students. And now I'm just going to take you through what a typical day might look like at the Island School. So the day, the day started with um, morning circle at 6.30, where we would sing the Bahamian National Anthem, and, make, and people would make announcements about what was going to happen on that day. From there, we went to AMX, which was a grueling exercise regime designed to prepare us for a final athletic event. Most mornings, this was a run swim, which is exactly what it sounds like. You do a combination of running and then swimming. However, some days, AMX would be team sports or an optional free dive or something like that. And all that training led up to the monster run swim, which was the culminating athletic event um, and was similar to the shorter run swims, except much longer. In total, it was about six miles of running and two miles of swimming. And as you can see in the picture down there, it's really tiring. Um, after AMX, we had classes. The summer term has three classes, each of which you take for a week. The first of those classes was marine ecology. This is probably the most incredible and unique class that I've ever taken, because in the morning, we would be in the classroom learning about something. And then in the afternoon, we would go scuba diving to observe the very same thing we had learned about in the morning. The next class was sustainable systems. In this class, we learned about how to live more sustainably and how to take better care of the places that we lived in. We took advantage of the incredible systems they had on campus. And just like with Mar Eco, we spent about half of our class time learning hands-on, either on the farm or in the aquaponic system, which is what I'm doing there, or in any of the other incredible systems that they have. And the final class was tourism and development. 
The main part of this class was a down island road trip on which we observed lots of the effects, both negative and positive, that development has had on Eleuthera. And we interviewed lots of different people on the island about the impact that tourism has had on their lives. This trip is also where we completed our 24-hour solos, except for my group was unable to complete ours because there was a forest fire in the middle of the night, so we had to, we had to abandon it. Uh, the classes are all very different from what most people consider a typical, typical class to be, and that is partly what makes the island school so special. Although the classes and the exercise routine were great, what really makes the island school special is the intentional community that is created by the teachers and the students working together. There's something about living in extremely close proximity to 51 other people for a month without access to your phone or the internet that is simply magical. The relationships that all of my classmates and I forged in our time at the island school were truly more special than I can put into words. I can honestly say that I have a deeper relationship with each and every one of the people that were there with me than I do with probably anyone else in the world. And lastly, I'd just like to offer my sincerest thanks to the Poole family, the grant committee, and everyone else who helped give me this experience. That was truly the best of my life. Also, I'd like to encourage every one of you to, to apply to the Island School. I know it's not possible for all of you to go. I just hope that a few of you do. Because maybe you saw something in my presentation that looked appealing to you. For a lot of people, it's the scuba diving. For some, it's the exercise. But whatever it is for you, I want you to take that and let it bring you to the wonderful island of Eleuthera. And once you're there, I want you to have an open mind. Because what really sets the island school apart from anywhere else is not that you're doing incredible things, because even though you are, and I'll carry the memories and the pictures and the videos of all the, the great things I did with me for a long time, but those might, might fade away eventually. What will be there forever for me is the fact that I was doing those incredible things with incredible people. And so when I think about the island school, I won't think about seeing whales that very few people have ever seen, or surviving a massive forest fire. I'll think about the people who were with me when I saw those whales, the people who I embraced after the fire. They are the island school to me, and I'm sure everyone who has ever been to the island school has their own group of people who make the island school what it is. I just hope that some of you will get the chance to do the same. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and I'm a three year senior. And over the summer, I received a page grant to attend the Harvard Medical School Med Science program. The med science program I participated in is a five day summer program that offers hands on patient care that shows what it's like to work in a medical environment. Every morning, we were taught technical skills such as suturing, intubation, placing IVs, and calculating heart rate. They use mannequins, fake skin grafts, and other tools that are used in real medical school programs to teach the skills necessary, necessary to complete the test that happens later in the day. While in the program, you receive two certifications, CPR and Stop the Bleed. You're CPR certified by a Boston paramedic and fireman. The Stop the Bleed certification is less well known, but essentially you're taught how to act in an emergency where there are people losing lots of blood and how to keep them in a stable condition until more help arrives. Along with the certifications, you and your team solve cases on STAN, which stands for Standard Man. This is a picture of STAN dressed as an elderly woman. Uh, STAN is a mannequin who breathes and has a heart rate. The room you're working in has cameras all around it, as well as microphones, to communicate with the patient and for the patient, a teacher or intern in the other room to communicate, communicate back to you. Your job is to compile all of the information given by the mannequin, propose possible problems, and eliminate them through CT scans, x-rays, or blood or other fluid tests. By using these tests, you evaluate what you believe to be the cause of the patient's distress and administer proper antidotes or treatments. While the program, you work with four registered nurses who have worked in hospital settings in many of the surrounding Boston hospitals, such as Brigham Women's Hospital and Boston Children's Hospital. Every afternoon, you work with your team to solve a case that is put together by that staff. There are also interns who have gone through the program before and are still pursuing their medical career. On top of these hands-on activities, outside lecturers come in to talk to you about their medical path and how they found their way into the medical community. One lecturer was a pediatric doctor who was originally a firefighter and then went to medical school to pursue his passion. The next was a child psychiatrist from Boston Children's Hospital who works with terminally ill patients and others suffering from severe diseases. She came in to talk to us about the different side of medicine, the psychological side of hospital life. 
We were also visited by a shock therapy nurse who treats depressed patients who are unresponsive to therapy and traditional medications. Although it has a negative connotation, shock therapy is actually more like an electrical neural stimulation that has been proven to dramatically improve patient and mental health. We also met the simulation and technical director from Brigham Women's Hospital, which is where we completed a case on a baby mannequin, which is what you can see here. The lectures, cases, and technical skills gave me a brief look into what it is like to be part of the medical world and also opened my eyes to the many medical paths one can take. If you or anyone you know are interested in the program, you can visit the website shown here, follow the Instagram, or email me and ask me any questions. Finally, I would like to thank the Page Grant Committee, Mrs. Fru, and everyone else who made my trip possible. Hello, everyone. My name is Mihir, and I'm a four-year senior here. So this past summer, I traveled to Ahmedabad, India to volunteer at Manav Sadhana, a non-governmental organization in Mahatma Gandhi's ashram that serves the underprivileged with love. The motto of Manav Sadhana is love all, serve all. My three-week trip to India began in Bombay, where I spent a few days with my extended family and did some sightseeing of the city. I visited the gateway of India, as shown by the photo, and I also just got a walk around the city. I also got to see some of my friends, including Raunik. From Bombay, I took an hour flight to Ahmedabad, where I spent a few weeks serving others. In the mornings, I walked for 10 minutes to the local preschool near Gandhi Ashram. I went to the preschool each day for two hours to teach the children basic English language skills and show them important hygiene habits. I taught them how to say the letters of the alphabet, the days of the week, the numbers one through 10, and the most popular fruits and vegetables of India. Additionally, I introduced them to hygiene techniques because they did not understand how to properly wash their hands. I showed them how to use soap both before and after their meal to prevent the spread of bacteria, and I recorded height and weight data to measure if they were stunted. In the afternoons, I stayed at Gandhi Ashram to help one of Manasadna's largest projects, Earn and Learn. Earn and Learn is a program that gives children the skills necessary to make holiday and greeting cards from biodegradable paper as an alternative to dealing wares, selling tea, or polishing shoes for long hours without a decent wage in the roads. The program then provides the children with an opportunity to earn money in a loving, child-friendly environment for four hours each day. Essentially, children enrolled in Earn and Learn are motivated to focus on their education rather than continuing a cycle of working in harsh conditions. Making friends with fellow volunteers was most certainly a highlight of my time in India. Before beginning to volunteer every day, I went to Gandhi Ashram to meet with the other volunteers and participate in morning prayer. From 10 to 10.30, I prayed and chanted along to the same religious songs with messages of acting with compassion and selflessness. My favorite part of this half an hour was how all the songs that were played were from the five major world religions because Mano Sadhana is a place of acceptance. When morning prayer ended, the other volunteers and I shared stories of our previous day's work. I enjoyed how this little moment in my day was simply an open conversation about all of our meaningful experiences. This allowed all the volunteers and I to truly bond and connect. On a final note, I just want to extend a huge thank you to Mrs. Fru, the Hatfield Grant Committee, and everyone else who, was, who provided me support to volunteer abroad. I encourage each of you to apply for a grant because it is a great entrepreneurial experience to simply write an application. And odds are, you will receive some funding for your desired summer project. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Colin Amelsberg. I'm a four-year senior. Um, this is my second year working with the Page Grant, and I just want to st start off by saying how thankful I am for this grant and all the people involved. It's an amazing opportunity, and I hope that many of you apply for one this year. As some of you might remember, last year I went to a Georgetown medical camp um, with the Page Grant to like make sure that I knew that medicine and the health sciences was the right field for me. However, this year I took it a step further, and I went to San Pedro, Belize for a month on a public health-oriented project. So Belize is located in Central America, bordering Guatemala and Mexico. However, San Pedro, where I stayed, was on an island called Ambergris Key, which was a 15-minute plane ride from the mainland. Once I landed in the beautiful San Pedro, my adventure began. The location of San Pedro was interesting in itself. Many tourists come to San Pedro every year, and many of the areas surrounding the town were filled with hotels and resorts. 
The city itself was bustling with local shops and street vendors, and everyone rode around on golf carts. Now, this might not sound like a place what, that a typical service trip might take place, but many of the areas around San Pedro had major health issues and suffered from poverty because of low wages and many other reasons. One of the areas, the DFC, where I live, was, is where I lived for four weeks with my host parents. So one of the biggest health issues that Belize is currently facing is non-communicable diseases, or NCDs for short, specifically issues with extreme blood sugar and pressure levels. Type 2 diabetes and hypertension, which is high blood pressure, are rampant throughout much of San Pedro because of lack of education on proper nutrition and exercise. For our work, we set up a mobile clinic three days a week in different impoverished areas and provided free blood pressure and blood sugar tests to everyone, anyone who wanted it, locals or otherwise. For this, I had to learn the regular pressure and sugar ranges, how to take blood pressure and sugar measurements. Taking blood sugar was the most exciting part for me because I got to stab people with a tiny needle in their finger 20 times a day. Um, we also saw many people return to our mobile clinic throughout my four weeks there, and um, we, they saw a decrease in their numbers, or an increase if they were below, and an improvement in their health, which was really exciting. Outside of our mobile clinics, we had a lot of other amazing experiences. One of my favorites was visiting the main hospital in Belize City, which is one of the biggest cities in Belize on the mainland. The hospital was shockingly small and understaffed. The trauma center only had two beds. The gynecology room only had one the isolation room only served two, and the pediatric wing could only hold six beds. With over 2,000 patients every month, these numbers did not seem feasible to me. The hospital didn't even have an, didn't even have an MRI. In fact, the only MRI in Belize City was like, located all the way on the other side of the city. However, all of the doctors and nurses we met there during the tour were incredibly passionate about their jobs and eager for their hospital to expand. In addition, we also made a greenhouse out of plastic bottles at an elementary school, and we made a reef-friendly sunscreen for the kids at the library, since much of the sunscreen that's commercial damages and kills the Belize, the Belize Barrier Reef. While the Great Barrier Reef in Australia might be the biggest, the Belize Barrier Reef is the most alive because the Great Barrier Reef is dying from pollution, which is also now happening to the Barrier Reef in Belize. We also snorkeled around the, barri um, the Barrier Reef. I saw like 20 sharks, two manatees, and many different types of fish. It's really cool. Uh, the photo on the right is us making the refundly sunscreen. We had to wear the mask because of chemicals. And so while on mainland Belize, we also visited and climbed Zanantinich, which is a really large Mayan ruin pictured there. It's me at the top. Uh, we also went cave tubing, which isn't really good in the photos, but it was really cool. It's really dark inside. Um, finally, I learned a lot about Belizean culture in general from my host parents and the people that I worked with. One of my favorite events was when we made tortillas from scratch, which was actually much harder than expected. I also learned about the three main languages, English, Spanish, and Belizean Creole. It was truly an amazing and vibrant country that I miss a lot. Um, once again, I want to give a big thanks and shout out to Projects Abroad, which is the program that I went through, the Page Family, the Page Grant Committee, and Mrs. Fru. And I also have a really short video. Hey guys, it's me, Pass Colin, here in Belize. I just wanted to show you guys some more pictures and videos of my time in Belize. Let's go! Oh, how did that get up there? That's not Belize. sadly. Um, everyone else can apply for one of these grants and the grant applications are due next Friday, February 22nd. If you have any questions, ask me, ask any of these kids, ask anyone.